Okay. Uh, sorry, I'm uh, still waking up this morning, so I'm going to be a bit slow, but um, yeah. So as usual, agenda is at the uh, bit.ly link. So um, I assume you all found it uh, from here, but linking the notes just in case. Uh, feel free to add anything onto the agenda if you think about it. Um, we have a couple items for today. Uh, and yeah, um, if anybody is new here and wants to take a minute or two to introduce themselves, feel free to come off mute. Hello, this is Apurva Kulkarni here, uh, joining for the first time. I'm just uh, interested in Kubernetes, contributing in the project. Easier to learn. Uh, I figured the best way to learn is to test the project. So here I am. Nice to meet you, everyone. Nice to meet you, too. Thanks for joining. And uh, yeah, feel free to like follow up more in the SIG testing channel and whatnot as well. Yep, we'll do that. Thank you. Hi, I'm Matt Irons. I am. Uh... Likewise, new and interested in seeing if there are useful ways to become useful. Uh, I've been in Kubernetes adjacent infrastructure roles in healthcare for about five and a half years, and I'm currently between jobs. And so I have uh, more time than I usually do. It's also nice to not be three to six Kubernetes releases in the past for the first time ever. Awesome. Welcome. And yeah, same thing, like uh, definitely a follow up in the SIG testing channel. And I'm sure we can also like point to stuff. All right. Michelle, uh, I'm curious if somebody can give us an update on that. So many tests turning red that was posted in the testing channel yesterday. Uh, I found. Yeah, go ahead. So this is. Uh... Benjamin was working on this, uh, removing Python 2 and updating the QKeyN image. That's the one that runs out. And I, I, I have no idea, so he may be, no. The, what I got is that he, we did the changes, it didn't work, it, we reverted, and the bot took these changes and updated the images uh, again with the Grom version so it started to run with these python 2 images with these images that doesn't have python 2 but the 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 ci and all the tooling is still not able to use uh, python 3 on complicated thanks so it was the bot that, <laughs> that sabotaged <laughs> I don't know, is, is that right? Did you want to involve uh, Basically, we wanted to, so what happened is we bumped the base image for the bootstrap image. And also we moved for Debian Buster to bullseyes. And now Python 2 has been removed from bullseyes, which is why this is breaking everything. And that's why we did the to make sure we maintain compatibility of the different, because in Debian bullseyes, the, the common line for Python is only, it's now named Python 3. And that's basically break the invocation of many scripts everywhere. So I suggest we put the same link. There's a package that basically create a same link pointing to Python 3. Once this is merged, we might have the chance to basically make sure bootstrap is still bump over the in the days. So the idea is like we we hope it's not breaking too much versus now where changing the base image of the bootstrap image is breaking everything. So if we move to Python 3, we might identify places where Python 3 is not working with some Python function. And we try to, and we are trying to fix that. Yeah, but why? Why? So uh, this was three days ago, and Benjamin reverted. But why they both picked these images again yesterday night? Um, I think it was like more like uh, I don't really know the detail about this, but I felt like okay. And so, right. and ultimately, we should not use the bootstrap images because bootstrap has been deprecated for three years. That's the real <laughs> yeah, well, but, but I mean, that's, that's okay. 
3D. That's a 3D problem. That's a 3D problem. That I know that the, pro the project on it was already deprecated. <laughs> so, yeah. So I think that's the, the root cause of everything is basically the bootstrap measure being deprecated. We, we are not supposed to maintain and use them, but we did uh, most of the communi communication to make sure basically people move from bootstrap to pod utils. So now it's about basically, I think this year we try to basically do most of the migration, hopefully. Uh, I have a question. <clears throat> so it looks like somebody's using Python 2, right? Um, what are the replacements for that Python 2 script? What, is it to upgrade to Python 3 or write it in Go or do something else? Uh, what's the plan for that code? Um, I, I think I think your question in more context. Yeah, so Basically. you said that there's some code written in Python 2 today, right? Um, so are we going to replace that code or does it just need to be upgraded to Python 3 so we can use Debian 11? Uh, the the main idea is to basically, I don't want to say Python 2, basically some code, some logic I've been, I've been written in Python. Now it's possible that code is compatible to Python 3. The problem here is basically during the invocation of that logic, the, the bash script is not finding the right uh, Python command to do the invocation. Okay. So we can basically say, okay, we create a symlink that went for Python to Python 3. We can improve the code, the invocation of those, of that Python logic and say, okay, we fix that. There are multiple options. Or we say, okay, we drop this. There's a Golan program called, there's a set of Golan program called Paul details people should use. Uh, we get rid of all those Python scripts we have been keeping for X years. Okay. So if anyone is interested to convert from Bootstrap, I, mean, I can convert the code. It's not that difficult. Uh, you run two to three. Is 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 even convert the YAML file? We just need to convert the YAML files for maybe two two hundred job. And we are we I think Jim Seven document that somewhere basically, and we just need to do that. That's yeah, it. If you dig up the docs, uh, I can take a stab at it. I'm not busy right now. Um, okay. And the, the other day, someone uh, someone replaced a lot of Python two things in Kubernetes. Kubernetes. So, do we have a list of all the things that we need to migrate? Or we just need to to run and see what happens. Well, the idea is to basically go over all the, the pro job and see if, like, for example, there's a there's a decoration true field. There's deco the decoration field prison. That's the one thing we should do. Uh, if we have one golem program that load all the pro job and trying to see if there's a decoration field, we can have a list of the job and back. We basically because of that entity, they've already know the list of the job and pack. So we can have a stab on those job and try to convert them. Is there a reason we wouldn't just convert everything we can? Let's say again. Bandwidth, bandwidth mostly. Uh, well, so for, I'm sorry, I must've missed something, but I mean, for moving, we're talking about moving between uh, GCP and Amazon? No, 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 no. no. This, this, this is the, the, yesterday they bought uh, Roberto the images and they started to fail within all the night here in Europe. So, yeah. yeah. I, and we were talking about that. And, and someone is asking if he can help. And because we are asking now what is needed to remove all this Python T or, Python to thin and be able to move forward, or what is needed, and this was uh, the point where we were discussing. Okay, it um, should be it should be the scenarios and uh, and the uh, bootstrap.py script in uh, testinfra. That's the problem. We we had a patch sent to Kubernetes, Kubernetes, but inside the 
inside one of the image layers in test infra there's a copy of some scripts in test infra and test infra itself moved to python 3 a long time ago um so everything test infra uses itself is moved but these are the deprecated instead of using um decorate proud jobs they're using the python scripts um so there's a script that like sort of does the equivalent of doing all the cloning and stuff and then there's a script that um you select one of many scripts for like I'm doing an E2E or I'm doing a test or whatever. Um, we don't even necessarily need to migrate off of that to patch this. It should be a really small patch to just <laughs> Python three the those couple of scripts, um, and then we need to bump the images uh, to fix. In the meantime, we should just roll back the the image bump again. Um, we shouldn't have needed anything else in it. So we don't need to migrate any Python to a script. Oh no, we should we should we should do the Python two to three migration, but that's like you can do that. Uh, there's a like automated tool for that at this point. Um, yeah, but that's very that's small what, scripts. What so, the people people is asking how they can help, and do we have a list or something that we can? Yeah, I mean, I can do the two to three migration. That's straightforward. Um, yeah, I mean that's that, a quick simple fix. Um, and then we can look at moving the jobs around and doing what. Yeah, I meant to do that, but I I left a note just to revert so that we don't blocked and uh, I stepped out for a minute. It's I mean it's literally just run two to three on a a directory and then uh we need to bump the images forward to pick that up. Um, but first to unblock things, we should just roll back the image bump. Just file a revert commit. Yeah, Nothing but that, that was that was fixed. Did we get one in today? Yeah, Nikita roll it back to okay. Nikita, so now, no, no. now that we have that, um, we need to two to three the, the remaining scripts in test infra, and then we need to do the cycle of bump the images, um, which the bot can do for us. But um, we should probably check that the build succeeded, and then bump the um, uh, bootstrap image in the images kubekins edui docker file and then we'll want to bump kubekins forward uh, and make sure that that's like safe and um we actually you don't have to do anything manual to test that there's uh we have a ci job for this purpose that always uses the latest image let me pull up that test grid um so once we've done that bump forward we should catch it um i wasn't expecting the we didn't use to auto bump bootstrap in the source files, only in the configs. So I wasn't expecting uh, the, the like latest bootstrap image to get picked back up again. Um, that's how we broke this time. Otherwise, like we have a safe rule for it where like when we push a new Kubekins image, you don't have to immediately bump it. Once the image builds and pushes, you go check test grid and see if it's good or you revert. Um, but the, we intention I intentionally uh, made sure it rolled forward the first time because uh, this should have been a safe change. We fixed Kubernetes and I wasn't expecting Test Infra to have any Python 3 anywhere because Test Infra only runs with Python or Python 2 anywhere because Test Infra already only runs with Python 3. Um, yeah, but, uh, except so, this, this thing that Test Infra doesn't use that is in Test Infra. But to be more specific, do we need help from someone to 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 do this Python two three conversion or not? Uh, if someone wants to, they're welcome to. If not, I'll file up here in a moment. I mean, we just uh, we just need to run two to three on the, um, yeah, the yeah. scripts that get copied into the image. Mohammed stepped away. It sounded like he wanted to do it, and I wouldn't want to take it from him. Let's let him come back. Yeah, if he wants to do it, that that's fine. Um, it's going to be a very uh, straightforward commit. Um, just run the two to three tool on um, the Jenkins and the bootstrap.py in the scenarios directory. Um, and then uh, once that merges, we'll uh, have an auto-built bootstrap image and we'll go bump Kubekin's EDE image to use the new bootstrap image um, and then once that auto builds there's a, if I can find it there's a CI job that we can check to see like does it work um, before we bump everything else uh, but if it's urgent I, I think that we can do it as fast as possible I thought that it was going to be a tedious 
thing that you need to do. No, no, no. I mean, there's just a few small things. It's things like bare print statements okay. that aren't being used as a function. Like it's just uh, the reason it's actually crashing in CI isn't even um, because of Python compatibility. It's because we're using user bin env Python and there isn't a Python binary in path. There's a Python ah, binary. That's but why you have we, not said other things. But even okay. if we just did like a symlink or something, it is actually very slightly Python 3 incompatible. Those scripts haven't been updated to use like print function or like other really trivial stuff. There's not a lot of code in those. Um, I actually already ran two to three the other day. I just didn't get it merged because I didn't think we needed it yet because we were just rolling back and I was going to wait until I had some time to shepherd this through. Um, I didn't expect the lingering latest bootstrap to get auto picked up again. <laughs> that That's what bit us. If that hadn't happened, uh, I would have done all of this while closely watching it after the first I issue we had. Um, wow. I wasn't expecting to be back in the world of breaking like most of Kubernetes CI suddenly. Uh, <laughs> It's been a long well, time since we've done that. I'm, I'm just Laura in the CI scene. When I wake up, it was uh, I don't know, a lot of people the, and a lot of things in these chats. This is a good um, point to remind us, though, that also the like the reason we're having that happen is because Test Infra has good testing at this point around most of the things in the repo, I would say. but. This bootstrap.py stuff is supposed to have been deprecated for years and no one is working on it. No one's yeah. really testing it. And um, test infra doesn't use it anywhere. So uh, if you break bootstrap.py behavior, there's like a somewhere in our like canary dashboard, there's a job you can check. Um, there's a lot more of them now and I haven't found the... The oh, names don't match. I, I can't recall which one of these is the one that like tests the latest uh, Kubekins image, but um, if we check but the it, configs, one of them does. It was not only Python that broke. It, it was breaking that it was missing the netstat tools. Okay, I need to check. Uh, well, but, yeah, uh, it's possible that there's some other things like that, but that's just a yeah. that's like a distro roll forward, and we are installing the same set of requested packages. So if if like a binary is missing or something, I mean, again, we've got to roll forward. Somehow this this environment's uh super old. So another thing we should consider is um forking this image again. Uh, similarly, kind has kind has a image that's very similar to this but removed all the things that we don't need like g cloud binaries and things um and built a more streamlined maintainable one and we're up to date um it's this cubekins image that's a bit of a nightmare and is out of date and now we're finding like <laughs> we're running on things that aren't shipped anymore like python 2 um and that shouldn't be happening not just because ci but because like uh, the reason this started coming up was I had an end user or a developer ping me that like they couldn't build stuff because it was trying to invoke Python 2 and they don't have Python 2 on their system because why would you have Python 2 on your system in 2023? It's been deprecated for like three years. Uh, Arnaud? Sorry, you have a raised hand. Uh, his video froze. He might have had the connection drop. Oh, uh, shoot. Yep. I know if you're still there, you're 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 muted. All right, Zoom. OK, I think in the meanwhile, um, I do also want to make sure we can get to some of the other uh, agenda items. So uh, I think Let's... this is a good discussion. Um, if there's any last bits that we should comment on, I think feel free to do it now. And then, ah, that's unfortunate. Um, I'm going to start a Slack thread with everyone interested in the SIG testing Slack where we can continue on like what we're going to roll forward. Yeah. I know. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Sorry, did you have a comment? Sorry, um, Zoom crash, internet is bad, so too many shenanigans. Yeah, basically, just want to say because we have an agenda, if we can go back to that and talk later about testing stuff. Awesome. 
Okay, then I'll leave the Slack thread to you. Folks, I just started one in uh, the SIG testing channel. Um, it's like kubecon z 2 e image is fixed thread. Let's uh, continue there with uh, what we'll do today. Awesome. Uh, all right, so next up, um, I just wanted to give a quick thing on like, uh, thanks folks for responding to SIG testing chairs. Um, I haven't been following up on that uh, very much yet, but I will uh, do so. Also, if there's anybody else interested, feel free to, again, ping me on Slack, um, but we'll figure out exactly what to do to uh, start like talking about or onboarding uh, new chairs. Um, also, uh, since I have you here, Ben, uh, <laughs> Uh, maintainer track talks. It sounds like we have a couple folks that volunteered in the SIG testing channel. Is there anything more to say about that or just leaving it to two folks um, uh, representing think, SIG testing for the maintainer track? Um, I think, yeah, I think we're good on that. So the the new um, format for submitting, you can have more than two people, but it has to be a panel format. Um, so I think we're not planning to do that. Usually we use the maintainer track slot to have a few um, folks show up that are like interested in knowing more about the SIG. Um, it's usually not super high attendance, but it, it is a thing that happens. And sometimes we get contributors out of that and that sort of thing. So um, most SIGs do this. Uh, like if you want to speak about something else, you should submit in like main conf. But for the maintainer track slot, we use it to um, like bring you up to speed a bit on like what have we been doing the past year and like how can you get involved and like what is the SIG. Um, so um, Patrick and Antonio are newest tech leads um, have volunteered to um, write and give that talk and um, put a little bit of focus on like some of the E2E stuff, um, get pe tell people some more about E2E testing and what we've been up to there. Um, so we just need them to submit by the end of the week or um, Michelle or I can help with that. Um, it's a pretty short form. So I, I like the form, there's a Slack thread and I, I think we're set there this time. Um, We'd love to have more people talk in the future. We'll also have this like at all future KubeCons. This is a this is like a recurring thing. Um, so you know if you've been working in the SIG and you're interested in speaking, um, we have some people spoken for it uh, this time. But uh, North America will be coming up, and I'm sure we'll be submitting those forms soon enough as well. Uh, if you are, uh, you can go ahead and reach out if you want, or we'll be starting a thread on that when that comes up. We actually talked about this previously, but we're now running up against the deadline. We need to actually submit, which is why this is coming up now. Um, so it's not like a last minute look for folks interested. We've been asking, but we're now hitting the like, okay, we have to confirm and submit. And I think we know who's talking now, so. Yeah, awesome. All right, uh, yeah, let me know if there's anything else on there. Otherwise, uh, Sean, I think you've got the API. Yeah. Uh, uh, part of this is going to be, uh, first of all, hi everyone. My name is Sean, uh, and I work with SIG testing, mostly with test grid, uh, do a lot of test grid stuff. Um, and, uh, part of this is going to be a status update and part of this is going to be a request for comment. Um, the first part is that we have a test grid API, like, uh, it's a go controller that uh, exposes data via HTTP and gRPC uh, that you can get data from uh, because the existing table endpoint was never really meant to be an API. Uh, though there are, like I know there are some things like uh, SIPI, for example, that do use it that way. Um, the code is in the test grid repo. I think it's good. I want to try and deploy it to production so that people can start using it. Because there was some chatter on SIG testing where it was like, oh, if we had a, like if we had this API, it would be nice. Um, I spoke with Dims about that, specifically about getting a host. Right now I'm struggling through getting the ingress set up, but after that I want to give it a friendly host that's like testgriddata.cates.io or testgridapi.cates.io or something like that. Um, uh, I think it's a good idea, uh, but if there are uh, objections or other thoughts uh, or questions, uh, let me know. 
Uh, Arno, I see you have your hand up. Do we need to have this running inside Google? The, Security, the new API endpoint. Uh, the new API is, well, so the code is all on GitHub that the API is. Um, and I'm planning to run it in open source on GC. Oh, I say on open source, I'm sorry. I am running on a GCP, but it's otherwise just kind of open to the public and the code is open source. Um, and it'll be publicly accessible so that people can hit it and get data. Is this an, is it, sorry, I missed at the beginning a little quick. Is this a new API or is it a new implementation of the API? It is a new API. Okay, so like the test grid front end doesn't use this. That's right. Do, do you, does the test grid front end plan to move to this? Uh, so that's my next bullet point. Uh, after to our I get... OKR planning. Hey. Okay. Yeah, well, you know, in this new question, economic reality. Uh... Oh, geez. Um, excellent question, Ben. Yes, after I get the API deployed, so that machines can start reading from it. Um, I have plans to rewrite the test grid API. Um, and it would be ideal if it use, I'm sorry, rewrite the test grid user interface. And it would be ideal if it used the new API. So I'd like to deploy the API first. But the, the second bullet point is, you know, I want to write an API, here's the demo, that kind of thing. It's a little bit of a leading question because I know we have other open things that use the API, but um, if the AP, if the API that for the front end is is open source, then that actually means the last thing I think is just the, I mean just the front end uh, itself. Is that right? Yeah. So if we can if we could get some help from some folks at some point on uh, a front end, then like the project could actually run an instance. Right. That's really cool. <laughs> it's been a long uh, road. Thank you. Yeah, part of the uh, historic difficulty with Telsgrid has been while the back, like the back end and all of the Go controllers and everything that munges the data is open source, um, the front end is not. The thing that actually displays the tests in a grid, uh, which uh, makes the back end not particularly useful. But in the process of rewriting it, um, it, like, at least in my mind, is just far easier to rewrite it in open source. Uh, 2030 might be a little uh, <laughs> ambitious, maybe. Um, well, and further context you know. for, for folks, Michelle and I have been in the space long enough, Michelle longer than me, that it nothing was open source in test grid, and it used to just be run entirely inside Google. And then at some point, it got like a community domain fronting it this <laughs> is just like here's the like the kubernetes test grid externally facing on a kubernetes domain but unlike basically everything else that one's just some magic google stuff and it was all internal and they have done a huge amount of effort uh rewriting each component and on the rewrite disentangling it from google internals and convincing management that this is a good path forward as opposed to um all of the huge amounts of internal usage and like focusing on that so uh, i know this has been very tricky to prioritize and it's been a really long path to get to the point where like test grid is yet another piece of like open sig testing infrastructure mm -hmm. So that's really cool. Yeah. Uh, so as far as disentangling goes, uh, my intent is to rewrite the user interface. So we're not porting over the existing one. The new one may look and feel different. And honestly, that's probably for the best because the, new, the old one looks, I mean, it looks, it looks its age. Um, <laughs> and uh, it is because we're rewriting it entirely in open source um, off of an API that is itself open source. Um, anybody can help me with this, uh, which would be great uh, because I'm not a front end engineer and would love help and request for comment. Um, and also if I get reprioritized or disappeared in the middle of the night, like here, here's my work. Uh, <laughs> whatever. 
whatever may happen. Um, on the test grid uh, Slack channel, I have been, uh, I have posted a couple of like proofs of concept. One is in Dart, another is in lit components. Uh, at this point, I'm quite convinced that lit components would be the good thing to write in. Um, and I have some vague ideas around, because once we write it in lit components and you roll it up, you get kind of this bundle of static JavaScript files as it's like buildable. Um, part of me wants to just host that as a static file next to the API. So that way it's just one controller that hosts some static files that are the UI and the API that's getting data itself. Um, I've seen that before. It's not clear to me whether that's best practice or not. Um, so I did want to ask for comment if anybody's very familiar with front end stuff or has some strong opinions about how this should all go together. Um, please come talk to me. I would love input on these kind of vague ideas that I have. The rest of SIG testing does work this way. Um, Go is reasonably efficient at serving like a static file directory. Um, it's pretty mm -hmm. easy to set that up. That That's, for example, how Prow works. Um, and it's also pretty easy to like do an image build that's like a backend binary and some like source files. Um, mm -hmm. Also, I think if you, when you get ready to like move forward with any of this, I think if we put out a call to like the to mail this in a few other places there are i'm not sure with like current staffing levels companies but i know in the past there have been a couple of companies that have had a vested interest in like being able to run a test grid uh for mm -hmm. like their own kubernetes adjacent testing and we could uh probably fish again for like some help with uh, the front end right that would be excellent what would be uh what would be some good mailing lists to send out for that well, we should start with the Kubernetes SIG testing mailing list. We could also consider, uh, I would say it would be reasonable in this instance to add like the dev, the like broad Kubernetes project mailing list and just kind of send a shout out that like, hey, we're like finishing <laughs> open sourcing test grid. If anybody's interested in helping, like come to like this repo. And um, mm -hmm. it's a little bit unusual because it's not a repo that's like in the organization, but um, I don't, I don't, I think that like folks can make an exception for the circumstance. Like if it were, if it were some other project, it might be a bit weird, like advertising, like some company's project or something, but Tesgrid has a like very lengthy history with Kubernetes. And I think folks will understand. So mm -hmm. I would say um, the Kubernetes dev mailing list, which I think that's dev at Kubernetes.io now, but you should double check. Uh, and um, it's in the okay. like, uh, member, the community membership docs, and uh, the SIG testing mailing list will be a good mm -hmm. place to like just like send a shout out to both those for like here's the here's the here's the source story we're working on it mm -hmm. who wants to join mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. come come meet us in like test grid Slack that's excellent uh, I think I will be ready to put out a general request for contributors I have like I said I have a demo project. Um, it's just in my personal branch now, but it is on test grid and y'all can view it and comment on it. Uh, my intent is to get that deployed like to production, even though it kind of doesn't do anything. And then that way we'll have the entire deployment pipeline. And then I think that would be a great time to call, Hey, here's the code base. Uh, please come talk to us, please submit PRs. And then like, you know, we'll already have the deployment pipeline in place. I agree. I think once you have like something you're you're developing, um, like here's what here's the repo you should contribute to. That's right. somewhere around there. It's like that's the time to to ask. Um, bypass a lot of bike shedding. Just like get things rolling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Sean, I have one question. Um, so yeah, do you think projects like Native and Istio that use the Google shared testing for are ready to deploy that API. Uh, I'm sorry, I might have missed part of the question. Can you say that again? <laughs> so some Kubernetes adjacent projects like Knative use test grid. Um, mm -hmm. So the API that you're building, right, with intent of self-hosting test grid entirely, right, can those projects deploy that API today? Or is there some... Uh, 
work that still needs to be done? The current API could be deployed today. Okay. Um, there is one kind of instance of test grid in open source that uh, Knative and Istio and all of these adjacent projects are also using. Like yeah. if you go to testgrid.case.io, you see Istio stuff there, I believe. Yeah, I, I'm aware of that. You know? I'm wondering right. like this new API that you built, right? Is that ready for use or is there a it's a bit, bit too early. Uh, no, it's ready for use. The API, okay. I'm combining two things. The user interface is, is, is not, but the API is ready for use. Uh, it is here. I'm going to give you a link to the command itself. Da, 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 da. There. Uh, that is the API controller. Um, OK. Anybody could run and deploy it. Uh, the API definition itself is defined by a protocol buffer, which is also in there, just in a different folder. Um, yeah, because I'm thinking of feeding this some Knative test grid data and play around with the API, because we do use the API, the current API, to pull some stuff, and it's, mm -hmm. it's a bit of a black box, so we're trying to get away from that. Yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, you can deploy that. It's a pretty basic Go controller as long as you have access to the Google Cloud storage for like that backs test grid. Um, okay, I, I do, I do, yeah. Yeah, if you have access to that, the API just reads it. Okay, cool. Um, so you can run it. Um, uh, yeah, please give it a try. Uh, yeah, I'll give it a try and I'll let you know how it goes. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, absolutely. If you find any gaps or interested, uh, if you have any improvements, PRs are always welcome. Um, but yeah, the API is there. I just, it's not deployed in production for Kates because ingresses and networking is hard. Uh, but I hope to do that soon, like maybe in the next couple of weeks, depending on, um, you know. I'm running into a bug, and heaven knows how long that'll take, but I have high hopes. <laughs> yeah, it shouldn't be that hard. I think myself and Arnad can help you get most of it done. Excellent. Thank you. Arno, I think that's the intention is to get the diamond. Uh, I think the intention is to get it running on or is it is the intention that you're going to run it on a gc like a google gcp uh the intention was to run it on the kate's test grid project which is where all of the other Got test it. grid controllers currently yeah. are i think arno maybe we can come back to that when we are ready to run a whole stack for kubernetes there there'll be some interesting mm -hmm. disentangling at some point because the current like testgrid.case.io is also linked to and used by a bunch of other projects. Um, that's something we probably have to start thinking about, but we're not like a little bit ahead of ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you are, of course, welcome to run it on the community infra or locally. If you have read permission to the bucket, the API should just work. Um, but it made sense to put this controller with the other controllers. And then when we need to move, we move them all at once. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, but yeah, uh, thank you for that suggestion. Honestly, if this takes too long, I might come back to doing the, you know, to doing that and just having the API run somewhere else. I think also it just if you get like stuck on something like configuring uh like Kubernetes ingress, the folks in this space, uh myself include, be happy to help. We got a bunch of Kubernetes people in the room. Yes. Uh I appreciate that. Uh I think the configuration is correct. Uh I think it's doing the wrong thing. Uh but the configuration is also in that repository. It's in the cluster directory. I'm looking at Antonio right now and SIG network, knowing full well that uh, Ingress is uh, um, one of the interesting corners <laughs> they're trying to sort out. <laughs> yeah, we can, we can follow up. What Ingress are you using? The GKE one or the engineer? 
The other not. And and GKE. GKE or... the GCE yeah. Okay. So we we just bring me uh, once. I think Antonio's actually on that team, so. Right. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I, I, okay. I landed there. Uh, it's good to know that I have support for that. Um, uh, yeah, that is. Uh, that's it. I'm going to awesome. try and do those things. Yeah, thanks, folks. Um, and glad to see the enthusiasm around here because this is a, I think it's been pointed out a long time in the making. Um, yeah. Uh, I think last thing is our notes item. Um, sorry, apologies to, yeah, anyway. Yeah, I just want to talk about something really, really old. So for people new in the call, when sick testing got bootstrapped, uh, we, we, I think different bot were, were created as GitHub account. And they were created under Google email, with Google emails. So I'm trying to get those credentials and share the responsibility with C contracts at some point. So this is a long shot. And I think you're just going to open some thread internally and say, oh, we have those GitHub account. We need the credential for that. Because I, I don't even know the email used for those bots. That's another interesting, tricky one that we will have to sort out externally. It's actually a Google Google group um, with its private, because like things like password reset or whatever you don't want going to everyone. Um, we'll probably need a Kubernetes.io private Google group and give a few folks access. Um, if we want to move the email over uh, for the one password, uh, Michelle has some overlap there is on the, the should have access to the credentials and I think has access to the SIG testing one password now. Um, but it's not something that we've used a lot yet. So there's also probably just going to be a little bit of like the SIG leadership. We'd probably need to. I, I'm very familiar with one password, but we haven't been using it. Uh, for anything in SIG testing so far. Um, I think we have the Zoom credentials in there, but uh, you know, it's not something you're touching often. Uh, I think I just shared the actual credentials when folks have needed them uh, directly, old school. Um, do you know if we have precedent for like a cross SIG vault? Yeah, because currently the vault for the for the basically the community on bots actually between seek testing and hit so okay. so we just need to so, add them to that vault and we need yeah. to set up a public email. Uh so I think the the thing that we might need from Contrabex slash uh infra is we need a um restricted mailing list for the bot uh user email. Because right now um, that's also a Google thing. You have all the tooling in the kids that I repo to grade the email. So I think that's the, the one thing I really ask is basically recover access to those bots because people have been picking ping me about this for sure. a long well, but time. I'll, I might deflect that a little bit back on um Contrabex, uh, because they'll go on these things. Like we're just kind of operating the inframe. We don't just need the account. I'm sure the Googlers are happy to like update the account or share the credentials, but um I don't want to necessarily ask them to go through like, like they're already staffing the rotation. Keep it up. I don't want to ask them to, uh, like no, no, no. Basically, if we can create, if we can create a new email, give that to Google so they yeah, can rotate the credential. Saying. So that's all we um, need. We should figure out with the with the rest of us to go um, get that email bootstrapped and then come back to like Michelle and Sean and say like, okay, we've got an email for you to use for the account now. Um, let's migrate over the credentials. Okay. Um, Cause also there'll be other people in the project, like you or me or something that are more familiar with the um, like infra configs and stuff for email and whatever. Um, I can, I can I think, take I help think, to... I think we should do that first. Cause it won't really help to have the, it won't, there's also, we require two factor enabled. Um, I guess we can do one password two factor now though. 
in the past that like same thing like we have uh like a set of spare creds um so we'll have a couple things to move over but one of them i feel like is it will make a lot more sense if we have an email to move it over to um because right now the uh like if you need to do a password reset or something like that that's going to an internal mailing list okay i'm gonna set up i'm gonna set this up this today and it's also it that... definitely needs to be restricted access it should only be a few very trusted uh community members like our leads or the the infron call or something because um it also does things like because the bot has high privileges everywhere it gets github's like vulnerability notifications for repos which are not otherwise public um i know because i'm still on that mailing list uh which seems okay but maybe not intended uh and um it gets a fair amount of interesting email besides the ability to password reset okay i'm gonna open a pull request for the email group and we can just Talk about over the <clears throat> progress. Cool. And that's it for me. I'll I'll um I'll sync up with Michelle about the um one password vault when we're ready to do that. Sounds great. All right. Um is there any last minute things the folks want to cover in the last, I'm gonna say five minutes of the meeting? Uh, or not? This is more like it adds up and basically there's an there's an ongoing conversation about moving the Prague control plane to the community infrastructure this year. So I don't think need... the control plane actually. <laughs> no, uh, first thing this the all the pro jobs and later, maybe September, October or next year. Uh, we, we, we need to move the prior country play. So that's it. Well, the up. easiest way to do it is to but, ask Google to transfer the project and you're done yeah. control play is there. We've uh, done we, or it doesn't, long story short, for stupid reasons, that isn't uh, an option. Um, but Wait, uh, I was able to do that last year for Kennedy. What happened? Uh, so into that <laughs> uh, okay. no. it's, it's, uh, it's, it's different for <laughs> Kubernetes. It more of a mess, but, uh, the, the real problem is, um, that project has credentials to other internal projects and we just do not have the capacity to migrate all that right now. We're currently on track to be like, uh, 4 million instead of 3 million this year. And we have a 3 million budget. And uh, most of what that CI is doing is running EDUI. The external stuff is already too expensive, and there's a ton of cluster EDUI running on in the internal accounts, and we can't grant external projects permission to spin up EDUI on internal projects. So we would have to move all of the EDUI testing as well before we can move the control plane. That's a problem. Um, but what we can do is we can do things like we can move more of the non e e stuff or kind e e stuff from either what's already moved to external or from internal to like Amazon um, as we ramp that up this year. But I don't think we're even going to be close this year to having enough overhead to move all of that GCP cluster e e And I don't think we're um i don't think we'll be moving the gcp cluster do we to like not gcp um so we having some of prow internal is granting us access to an uncapped budget for that stuff and part of the reason we're not even more comically over budget at the moment until we get the until we get like the download costs and stuff actually under control uh, I don't think we can move the control plane and we can't move some, we can't move the E2E -E testing. Uh, we can't move the control plane because we can't move the E2E -E testing. We moved the critical stuff already and that's eating a, a good chunk. Um, if we continue to move the rest of the long tail, the E2E -E testing, we will be, we, we won't, we won't have space. Uh, uh, we quick question. Uh, but... Those E2E -E tests, right? 
are they strictly dependent on GCE nodes or can they just run on like any well, Linux so the problem is no one maintains any tooling for this except uh, hi, me again. Um, <laughs> there's some shell scripts that you can pass like hundreds of environment variables to to configure how you need the E2E cluster to work. And they can spin up from the, like the latest Kubernetes source code. Um, it would be a huge lift to make all of those jobs do something equivalent on some other environment. Uh, as is, no one... The only reason the current environment works is because that source code is in the Kubernetes repo and it runs on your PRs. So uh, between a couple of patches from me here and there, uh, people have to patch it when they make some breaking change to cluster bootstrap. Uh, it's really hard to get that sort of thing worked on. I have a lot of experience with that with Kind. Um, and Kind gets to cheat quite a bit by a, a lot of the places where you would break something you would actually be breaking Cubatum. So people need to patch that. And that is in tree. Um, if we switch to something else to run like clusters on AWS or something like that, we have to have someone to maintain that tooling. It has to work with Kubernetes source code at head or ahead of head with people's new patches that aren't merged yet. And you have to rewrite all the CI jobs to do the equivalent cluster configuration and right now, the cluster configuration is a whole bunch of environment variables that get interpreted into that bash. Oh, interesting. Like, uh, I'm a bit naive because I've never touched the KK repository at all. In my mind, I'm thinking um, you spin up some VMs, you build a bunch of Go code, and you copy the files over to that server, and you start some services, and you do something, and then you kill everything. There's a lot that goes into actually bootstrapping uh -huh. a cluster and making it work with like the latest changes. And there's all kinds of like knobs that you tune, like turning on alpha APIs or whatever. And those things are only kind of standard by way of like component configs or flags, but no one has a tool. Nobody's tools exposes those directly because that's in like unmaintainable insane. This shell script stuff basically does. You can just like, I'm going to change a flag on API server by setting some environment variable. And so there's a ton of CI jobs that date way back in the project that are set up to like, I'm going to set these five options on the cluster for like the size and shape of the cluster and what uh, things I'm tuning, turning on alpha APIs, setting some runtime field, deploying the CSI controller, whatever. And then we run E2E tests against it. Um, okay. Yeah, and like most tools available, like if you wanted to use like EKS or something, I mean, you can't use EKS with like fully open source latest, greatest changes that aren't even merged yet. Um, there are very few tools. Right now we have the cluster scripts, which work on GCE and no one wants to touch and no one should touch, but we depend okay. on. <laughs> and then we have um, kind. Uh, we don't have anything else that has managed to maintain stable CI. For example, cluster API exists um, and kind of fills this space, but it doesn't have all these option tunes. And last I checked, um, they didn't have reliable conformance CI with like bleeding edge changes yet. Like I'm sure when they ship releases and they and they say a Kubernetes release is verified that like it's passing conformance and whatever. But for like the stuff running Kubernetes at head, um, the absolute latest changes like that, it's a lot of effort to get something like that stable and and okay no one's funding this um so uh even if we start working on that now and we get some kind of commitment from someone to maintain a tool like this uh it's going to be a long tail to then go to each ci job and figure out what the heck those environment variables are actually configuring and do the equivalent thing in some other real config format um okay it's a nightmare. <laughs> and uh, right now it's really, really, really to get anybody to touch because it's like the GCE stuff is good enough and it works and uh, it like de facto isn't broken because it's in tree. But if you said like, oh, I'm going to build a new tool that like creates clusters on AWS, I'm just going to PR it to Kubernetes. No one would permit this. Okay. No one would permit you writing a new cluster bootstrap tool and checking it into Kubernetes, even kind um, that was the original plan. It was going to be a basal target, like totally hermetic, spin up a cluster from source code locally. And uh, same thing, cluster lifecycle was like, no way, absolutely not. We have all these cluster tools out of tree. 
um, same thing like cloud providers are going out of tree. So we have a little bit of a problem there because like, but we need a cloud provider to run like real clusters. Uh, so I think we're just going to do the, we're going to do the, probably going to wind up doing the smallest thing and just patching the, the existing legacy GCE stuff to use the like out of tree GCE provider. Okay. <laughs> so it's less like we want to use GCP and more GCP. P is what we had and now we're somewhat stuck with like the CI shell unintended vendor lock in yeah, get, I get it yeah uh, it, and we used to run pre-submit on chaos AWS the reason we don't do that is because it's we switched from Google paying the the bill with like a credit card to Amazon paying the bill and they let the bill lapse for like months uh and the account got terminated for a while and all the CI broke and um just from being out of pre-submit for a while, we never got the momentum back to like even have one job running on AWS again um, because that project is like now forever trying to, like everyone else trying to catch up with the latest Kubernetes release, not bleeding edge source code changes. Uh, okay. It's hard to staff that sort of thing. And when you have the stance that you convince Kubernetes developers, no, you have to go patch kind if you actually manage to break it. Uh, <laughs> that only works after like a protracted period of showing them that like if something broke it was actually broken and it isn't just a problem with the tool this is going to be really hard I, like i said as is the gce scripts are like not staffed by anyone from any company <laughs> at all um myself and one or two other people try to review changes when they're actually necessary and generally discourage touching it. Um, and while I might be happy to approve like adding new clouds or something, I guarantee other folks in the project would be upset. And I actually do think if we can get people to put energy behind this, we should move to something else, but it's a, I would say that's an actually equal size task to the rest of the stuff we're doing in infra. And it has a much bigger question of who's maintaining this long term. Like when we create a GKE cluster and run like Prow on it, that isn't going to have a super lo a large long term overhead. But maintaining a tool that deploys Kubernetes clusters, uh, particularly at unreleased latest source code changes, is actually something that needs quite a lot of ongoing maintenance. And um, we don't even have a commitment for the current scripts. Uh, this is something I brought up in the governing board meeting, even when they were like, oh, we'll just move CI to Amazon, fix the cost. <laughs> like, well, we can move like unit and verify and stuff, but moving E2E is going to be actually a really big lift. Or same thing with like, oh, move to GitHub Actions. Like, well, but GitHub Actions doesn't have Boscos and like GCP access and whatever, like just even starting from that. So, um, I mean, it's a technically feasible project and something that probably should happen eventually, but uh, I think we have other, like, much quicker wins with, like, the, I mean, just the bandwidth is most of the cost anyhow. If we can keep making progress on all the download costs, um, it won't be a big deal that, like, cluster EDUEs are mostly on GCP. Okay. But uh, it does mean that, like, to finish migrating Prow fully to public infrastructure, we have to have space to run the rest of the EDUEs. And that will happen whenever we finally see the cost shift on the um, downloads. Uh, Nat? Is there a, a pithy answer to the question of what the move to Amazon includes or covers? Sounds like there's some sort of a blank check there. Um, yeah, that's kind of meaning of itself. Uh, the short version is basically Amazon is now committing to also provide 3 million credits a year, but their commitment's a little bit different. With GCP, we get like 3 million credited against the account like in January or something like that. Um, with Amazon, they're giving us some credit over time, and there's a very clear if you want to receive the full credit and get it on an ongoing basis, you need to be spending it sizably because they have a zero sum game going on with like, my understanding is something like they have like a pool of credits for open source and we're getting some reasonably large chunk of it allocated our way. But if we don't wind up using it, they will reallocate it to someone else. Um, 
So we kind of have two problems. One, we're like way over the GCP credit and we need to reduce that. But separately on the Amazon, we also just need to like spin up whatever we can so that um, going forward, we have it. Even if we do something kind of inefficient right now, we can always improve efficiency later. But if we don't use it, we will not continue to receive it. Uh, and that's net new for this. That's net new for this year. Uh, they announced it the last KubeCon. Um, but there is no goal to try to embrace EV at Amazon with chaos or something like that. Uh, I would like to see that, but currently we don't have contributing engineers. Um, the CNCF is providing some contractors now, and I met with them this morning, but um, there's other like lower hanging fruit for like getting some spend running and reducing the GCP bill in terms of our cost is, our, the, the public cost is like 66% serving downloads to users and stuff. Um, and the and the cost stuff that Google's still paying for internally, it's like seventy five percent. So if you can shift that to not be crazy, because it's all egress to other clouds and stuff, um, if we can get that fixed eventually, then we actually have lots of room within the three million GCP to run it. And then it's like, is it worth doing this really challenging effort to move it over when no one's stepping up to like? maintain all this and it's very hard to find because you need someone you need to have people with expertise in like actually running a cluster like the hard way or something like that maintaining this tool and most of those people are making money working on a product that and the products don't need to support the absolute latest source code they need to support releases um so that is a particularly challenging one and it probably isn't necessary long term like if someone wanted it like if amazon wants to see more things running on their cloud like happy to work with them on that but i like those of us here can't necessarily commit to like keeping that functioning even if we could get something spun up um the current state of keeping the cluster e2e is working is not great and but, as opposed uh, to all the other it's a issue. lot harder uh things like the downloads should be a lot more straightforward the thing we're running into there is just users know the current location and getting people to migrate has a lot of lag. So the path to getting the bandwidth cost down is asking people to use like cloud specific endpoints. Uh, we have, we have Kubernetes subdomains. Like, so we have registry.cates.io and we're like move from mm -hmm. the GCR to registry.cates.io. And behind that, we will reroute to whatever we need to do. Oh, good. Great. But um, we haven't done it for all the download stuff yet. And we haven't gotten everyone to switch. Most of the other download things are already at least on a community domain, but they point at GCP. The image hosting was a huge chunk of the cost and was just pointed straight at GCP directly, like GCR. Um, so uh, for the binaries, we just need to update what's behind it. Um, and that will be the first thing I'm asking the contractors to look at. For the container images, we have to do more of a push on like, we need people to switch actively and that happens to some extent over time just as the only new ones are being posted to registry right yeah so mohammed actually has a kept open about uh stopping publishing to gcr and only publishing to the new registry because currently oh, i thought that had already happened we only advertise the new one um but <laughs> we're okay. still actually publishing to both locations uh so yeah there's a plan to slowly things. kill the product right <laughs> in other words so also, yeah, that's the first like step that we're time. planning. Um, but yeah, we're way over time, and uh, folks are free to leave. But I'm also happy to continue to bring people up to speed on this because this is a big problem. Thanks, Prashant. Sure. This is a great meeting today, y'all. Yeah. Thanks everyone. Um, sorry again for going over time, but uh, ended up being a lot more full than I was thinking from the initial agenda. Um, also sounds like there is a lot to follow up on uh, later, so I think the SIG testing channel should probably be busy today and like for a bit going forward, but definitely uh, please keep in contact there about uh, any of the interests around these. Um, I need to find out more about the Amazon stuff as well this year. Also SIG Kate's Infra. Um, yes. We, there's a, you know, there's a standing meeting specifically for like the Infra cost management and stuff, but like SIG testing is going to be pretty involved there because we will be moving at least some portion of the ci um 
there's a question of like how effectively can we move all of it long term and that's what i'm getting into i i think that moving all of it off of gcp is super infeasible and moving the gcp stuff that's internal to external is something we don't want to do right now because internal billing works differently and we're we don't have like a hard cap there uh for the external stuff there is literally like three million got dropped in the <laughs> account as a credit at the beginning of the year and we're burning through it way faster than three million a year uh and <laughs> This is not a great year to tell people like, hey, I need you to drop like another mill in this account or something. Um, trying to avoid that the best we can, but also just as importantly, we want to make sure that in 2024, Amazon isn't like, oh, you used like 100K last year, you can have 100K. And we're like, wait, but we needed that like 3 million because we actually have a lot of infrastructure to run. We just couldn't spin up fast enough. So whatever we can do uh, quickly is what we should do. Longer term, I think uh, it makes more sense to try to get more players involved and, and split across more clouds. And like that's something we're talking about. We're also looking at, um, I think we're nearing getting uh, Fastly helping us specifically with some like bandwidth um, doing some of the downloads. But uh, in the more immediate term, it almost makes more sense to just say, screw it, like downloads are coming off Amazon. We need to like show them that we're serious about actually using those credits. And there's not a lot of things that you can just snap your fingers and move to another cloud. <laughs> um, the applications that we run on Kubernetes, we totally can. Kubernetes is portable itself. But that's not much of our cost. Most of our cost is serving downloads or spinning up Kubernetes source code from source and running it, which is a little bit harder to do portably. Cool. Well, if you're also, if anyone is interested in that, please come to the Sig Kate Simfra uh, channel and uh, discussions and stuff. You'll see myself and Mohammed and some other faces from this call over there too. Thanks all. All right. Thanks again, everybody. Um, yeah, follow Thanks. up on the channel and uh, see you all in two weeks. Sorry. If there's any last things that people want to say, feel free. But...